but he is not a superstar. I am shocked. At uh, uh, why? Uh, uh, are you yes. John and Did you say that with a straight face? The, way, the way that he is acting, he is no superstar to me. <laughs> no oh, superstar. Why are we not huge. throwing him the ball take. ten plus times? Be careful what you say. <laughs> Straight to the action, there's a lot going on. Try to lock these reductions down, right? Call me John. I'ma talk to Jared, cause he might keep me calm. Had my top pick for this week, but he bombed. Caleb said he had a weak week, but he's strong. Jonathan said he repeat, now it's on. In love with the game, who you got? Can I wait? Drop by by the dorm, come and watch the babe. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dorm Bay Podcast, season five episode five we are slowly moving through this nfl season uh week by week it is week four yeah week four uh currently we are waiting for this primetime game to start between the bills and the ravens now the bills that it's pretty relevant right now because if you're looking at your screen there's something a bit off about one of us uh john <laughs> Can you pinpoint what's what's going on? You know, if you're watching, if you're listening, I'm sorry, but if you're watching, you should notice something that's very uncanny uh, for Jonathan. Um, what happened was on the podcast a few weeks ago, Jonathan and I, and I made a bet because we were playing against each other in fantasy football in our league. And we said that the winner of our matchup would be able to send a beanie of our choice, any team, to the opposing player that lost the matchup, and then the loser would have to wear the beanie on the podcast. And here it is, Jonathan, everybody knows that you hate the Bills. You think the Bills suck. The Bills are just always going to suck, and that's just how it is. I'm sorry. Um, I did send you a Bills beanie. Um, The good thing is that in Buffalo it is very cold, so maybe you could put that to good use, but... Maybe maybe this is the only time you're going to wear it, or maybe this will start to, you know, change your mind about the Bills. Maybe you'll start to become a Bills fan, even, because they're even better than the Cowboys. It looks good on you, man. Oh, <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I thought John completely <laughs> forgot about that bet. And then all of a sudden, like, last week or so, he's like, hey, what's your address? I kind of got excited. I thought he was going to ask me to be one of his, you know, best men or groomsmen or something for his wedding. I thought he was getting married. And I didn't know he had a girlfriend. I was like, oh, this guy's getting married soon. Okay, well, I'm excited for that. So John reminded me that, hey, he sent me something. So I decided to go check my mailbox. And I was excited. About to, I thought I was about to open some a wedding invite. Then I opened it and I saw Bill's hat. And I remembered the bet that we had, unfortunately. So I'm honoring my bet. Good job, John. You beat me in fantasy football that week. You have a great team, great squad. Um, we'll see how the rest of the season plays out. But, uh, Yes, you you demolished me that week. <laughs> yeah, it was 140 to 101, <laughs> but he's got um, a score. <laughs> oh. But you know what? I I really hope that we do another bet because it was fun, and I want to give you the chance to try to beat me again because that's that's what's fun about this podcast is is that competition. And and I, I could use I could use a Giants hat. I know you would send me you would you wouldn't send me a bad team. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Well, uh, Jonathan, you're actually going to a Bills game this year for work, so you can actually use that hat. Um, yeah. So it was a nice gesture, I think. <laughs> it um, was with good intention. <laughs> good intention, yeah. Yeah. Fair um, play to you for, for sticking through, wearing it, keep being a yeah, man of your word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah good on you, good on you. Um, well, we'll have some more bets maybe down the road. Um, but let's get into this. Week four slate of games. Um, our game that we're doing today or tonight or whenever you're watching this is called Headlines. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Headlines, headlines, newspapers. That's what you got to think of mm-hmm. right now, okay? The first one, Caleb, you're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. I'm just going to be straight I know. I know where this is going. And if you live in Philly or you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan, you might want to skip, look at the time codes, look at the timestamps in the description. Just go right past us. We have other good topics. Die, Eagles, die. Stop it. Oh. Stop it. Philadelphia Eagles continue to lose as their second game of the season is lost to the Bucks in Tampa. We've heard that before. The Bucks beat them again. 
They cannot get past this team. 16 points for the Philadelphia Eagles to the Tampa Bay Bucks, 33. Jalen Hurts had a feeble 158 yards passing with basically no one to pass to. Devonta Smith got concussed last game. Hope he's okay. A.J. Brown's been out since God knows how long. You got no one to throw to on the offensive side. You're giving up 365 yards per game. You gave up 445 today. This team is not clicking whatsoever. Barkley might be your only saving grace. He's consistently saving you guys. It's like he's back on the Giants. He's back on the Giants being the only guy that can spark an offense. Um, now, Caleb, I want you to, to settle for a second <laughs> and marinate with what I just said. <laughs> Let's hit it over to John and Jonathan, the rivals in the NFC East, the Giants and the Cowboys fan. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the Eagles' downfall? <sighs> Yeah, um, I need to I need to say something first. Down, Jared. <laughs> All right, Jared. I like I like your headline. I have a headline for you for the Eagles. This is what the headline is going to be: Buy Eagles, buy. They have a buy in Week Five, and with Lane Johnson out, Devonta Smith out, AJ Brown out, they started their bye week early. That's all that happened. Wow. Okay, so they just threw this game away. Yeah, I guys, they're <laughs> going to be fine. The defense looks like shit. They gave up 450 <laughs> yards to the Bucks. It's terrible, right? But look, the offense, once the offense gets lane, if you've looked and they came out with this before the game, should have bit the Bucks. With Lane Johnson out, they're like, they're like, their win percentage is like 300. When the yeah. Lane Johnson is in, it's like 650 or 700. Like, it's a complete difference. Now, when he's back after the bye, AJ Brown will be back. Devonta Smith will be back. Part of having a good defense is having your offense be able to hold the ball. And if the offense can't hold the ball, the defense is out on the field for so many plays. How many plays do we see the Buccaneers run? I mean, they ran it 25 times, and Baker threw it 47 times. That's ridiculous. You never see that. So they're going to be fine. They're going on the bye. After their bye, they play the Browns, and then they play the Giants. That's that's two wins for them, unfortunately. But that is what they're they're going to be okay, guys. Now the defense is still an issue. I don't I don't like that secondary. It's terrible. But they're going to be okay. They're not going to be okay. I hate <laughs> to say it. Well, I love to say it as a Cowboys fan, but is that your they, headline? Didn't, they haven't they're scored. Not be okay. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be okay. That's headline. <laughs> They haven't scored a point in the past uh, four games in the first quarter. No points for the Eagles. That is a big you, issue. You know what that yeah. You know what that tells me? That tells me poor game planning, which ultimately comes down to the coach. Nick Sirianni. I've always known this guy's overrated. He's had a great talent around him, great squad, great team. He's not that great of a coach. They don't game plan properly. I don't know. I don't know why they don't score. At least like a field goal or something. These past four games, and not all, their opponents have been, not been like the best teams in the NFL. Okay, these are all mediocre teams, and they still can't score points in the first quarter. They're not preparing well for the game, which ultimately comes down to coaching. Um, and so that's a huge issue. You can't not like you can't get your, you know get yourself out of a hole which they're in in the division if you don't have a good coach that can you know guarantee you you know, seven points at least, like the first drive. That's why um, the Chiefs uh, commonly score like the first drive, right? Because they have a good game plan coming in. They're like, okay, we can at least, you know, make sure we get seven points the first drive. We have a good game plan. This is what's going to happen. But good teams, other good teams can adjust and fix it, and that's why um, it's not always easy to score every drive. But the first drive at least, it should be pretty simple because you come in with a good game plan. Did I game plan it correctly? The Eagles are in trouble. Like Jared said, depending on Barkley, um, I hope Barkley stays healthy the entire season. But the moment he, like, if he goes down, what are they going to do? <laughs> oh God! I mean, you've been you saying depend- that for like two years. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. look at look at Christian um, McCaffrey. I, I did. See what say I'm saying? It, too, when he was on the Giants, it's run, that's running backs take hits every play. Whether you're running, whether you're blocking, you have to be physical every play. It's let me ask you it, this, John. Comes on your body before we throw it to Caleb. Barkley. Yes, we know that he probably can't carry this team. Uh, but it, they don't have Devonta Smith. They don't have A.J. Brown. 
are th- those are some good excuses to have. They're they're two of the top receivers in the NFL, and they're down, and they didn't have them today. So, is it, it's actually is it, is it kind of good that yeah they they lost, but you're down two guys. You have an excuse when they when you get those guys back, and the problems are still there. Then it's panic time. Am I wrong, or are you panicking now? Have those guys been there? The like, have they been gone the entire season? No, they've been there for a couple games. Well, AJ Brown's and, been gone for a while, but yeah, Devonta's been there. They, they did lose to the Falcons, but uh, you it's know, not like it's not like the when they come back. Team. Yeah, it's not like when they come back, everything is going to mesh completely. Okay, they're not, probably not going to be 100 percent when they come back. Number one, they're probably going to be rushed back. Number two, it's all about chemistry. Okay, and the, like they Devonte Devonte Smith, like you said. He's played a couple games this season, still no points in the first quarter. That's not going to change. This comes down to coaching and strategy. Their coaches are getting exposed now, finally. They can't just depend on luck and the great athletes they have, which they have been over the past couple of years. You actually have to coach them now. You actually have a good. You actually have to have a good strategy now, which they don't, which is what we're seeing. This is the, probably the most talented team in the NFL, arguably. There's no yeah. reason that they shouldn't be scoring in the first quarter, and, and there's no reason they should have lost to the Bucs like this. An embarrassment on next year, an embarrassment. If, if Andy Reid had the squad, oh, they'd be untouchable. Um, Caleb, I want to give you a little bit of a, of direction. What are you most concerned about when you watch when you watch the game today? Uh, what what is what's the one thing that stands out to you that that you say they need to fix? And if they don't, they're not a Super Bowl team or going to win the division playoff team. Like, what, what's the one thing that stands out to you? Yeah, from from what I, it's always tough to stomach uh, any loss. I hate losing. Not that I'm out there, but I identify with the team. And from what I saw, largely, I agree with what Jonathan said about honestly coaching. Like, I'm I like Nick Sirianni, but this would be the second season in a row where the people he's hired and the talent we have have not been made efficient. Have not been utilized the way that. I think most people would expect, you know, there was a, there was a thing where they had, I think a uh, Nolan, one of the linebackers up against Chris Godwin on like the on man coverage. And it's just like, how does I, I get to game of matchups? It's all these different things. But last season, the problem was we had our best defensive lineman dropping back and playing coverage. Like the, I'm not just blaming Wink Martindale, but part of it is what I said last year, bleeding into this year is at this point, it's the message and identity of the team is what Nick Sirianni has been doing and hiring people it's like i don't want to keep shuffling defensive coordinators and offensive coordinators every year you know like get the guy who's going to be here five years you see what spagnola does with the chiefs that has to be the standard now he's exceptional and rare but find the guy that's going to be the guy for a while versus like getting guys that we have to replace you know and for the talent because these these players they they have most the average uh, career in the nfl is three years so i wanted to answer your question specifically i think it's seeing an inefficient defense that's not optimized. The other part is turnovers with Jalen Hurts. I like Jalen Hurts, but dude, it's like the Lane Johnson stat that John brought up when, you know, when, and this is true for any quarterback, but particularly when you have a game where Hurts isn't turning over the ball, he's had a turnover every game this season. Okay. And like, I think, what was the thing? Nine straight games with a turnover. This is from Barstool Philly. Three turnovers this season in the red zone, considering there's been only four games. That's three times. And then 27 turnovers since start of the last season. And I'll, I'll, I'll note they put an image of Shane Gillis, the comedian, uh, with a... Uh, some with a you know not in a happy place. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Not in a ha- after I last the, after last I, episode. I am trying to be measured. <laughs> I know what the yeah. meme is. He's, but that's what it feels, yeah. and I, it's frustrating watching from what I've seen, and not just this game, uh, but in the past few weeks. Like, dude, like it's hard being a quarterback, but there have been a few times where some deci- some turnovers from Jalen came at the worst times. That then you put the inefficient, unoptimized uh, defense out there, and we're losing you get games that we shouldn't lose. And and credit. Jonathan, I agree. Like we're one of the most talented teams as we were last year. As we were in the year we went to the Super Bowl, I was saying like some of the defense, some of the people in charge were not using our guys the way they could really have been used in someone else's hands. And so I think it's a conglomeration of issues as these things always are is matchups. Uh, Jalen Hurts turning over the ball, not having weapons is part of that. That's a problem, you know, but 
this isn't the first game with. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, injuries, you know, for this particular game. But like Jonathan said, we've had other guys throughout this, and it's like you see other quarterbacks with less not turn it over as much. So it's like that's got to be the standard if we want to succeed, and that's you know that's part of being the franchise guy. We've seen the stat across the NFL of like a lot of the quarterbacks. I mean. Trevor Lawrence comes to mind of quarterbacks that made a ton of money and Joe Burrow, you know, like quarterbacks who signed huge contracts that their performance has been overall very down. And I don't would want, I do not want the Eagles to be that. Cause I also think Hertz has it in them to be the first quarterback, I think to lose in the, the debut Super Bowl and then go back. I want him to be the first guy to do it. Um, and or whatever the stat is in this generation, whatever it is. So I think that's part of it. The other aspect for this game specifically, and to answer your headline question, and this, this might be, I don't know if you guys will understand the reference, but I think the headline would be uh, Dread Pirate Baker. Like Baker Mayfield just and the Bucks match up really well against the Eagles. I predict that they would lose, uh, the, the Eagles would lose to them in the playoffs just because Baker can turn it on when he's when he's hot and the Buccaneers have a good matchup against us. And lo- honestly, this, this week I was like kind of, fearful of what to have changed talking about all the other things that I went to about the defense, about the turnovers, like some of that was still going on. And then you just add to the fact that the bucks just match up really well. And sometimes not even in your division, this, this is quarterbacks that just do really well against a particular team every time they play. And I hate to say it, but Baker has the Eagles number for now. Now you gotta, that could be changed, you know, but dread pirate Baker is a reference to, I think the, uh, the princess bride, you know, like the, the, the psychology of this guy that can beat you. I think that's what the Eagles deal with. So that's for this week. That's clever. big picture. I think Jonathan and John hit, you know, very good points on each side and the buy is going to help. The Eagles have the room to improve, but uh, yeah, watching Eagles games is frustrating, man. Uh, me and the Philly friends that I have will text and it's like, yeah, we're, we're Shane Gillis right now. You know, what's well, tough. Cause like what in the last, like what's, eight games or 10 games you guys are like what two for eight or something like that because you ended the season like yeah. oh and six so it's just a weird stretch um i'm not gonna say too much about it because i also i'm just baffled i had them going all the way I mean, when, when they got barkley i thought it was gonna be a smooth ride well um, now the divisions but as it- and I hate proving you're right. We can but throw the division, man. Now it's yeah. We can actually throw we'll, the Cowboys. Uh, we're won. also going to talk about the Jets, but we'll, let's throw it to the Commanders because I want to talk about them. They beat the Cardinals in Arizona, forty-two to fourteen. Now last week they played on Monday night, and we missed the game because obviously we had the podcast on Sunday, and uh, Jaden Daniels had his coming out party in Cincinnati against the Bengals. Uh, through for, I don't know what it was, 86% uh, completion percentage uh, during that game. He goes another 86 completion percentage against the Cardinals. Uh, my headline, Commanders Command <laughs> a first-place lead in the NFC East. Don't look now, but the Commanders are in first place. And need I remind the folks at home of the stat – that has reigned true since 2004, that there's always been an alternate, a switching champion in the NFC East. There's never been a back-to-back since 2003, 2004. We all were looking at the Eagles. I mean, we looked at the roster like we just, we, like we just said. The roster seemed unbeatable. And we forgot about the commanders. The commanders are in first place. And honestly, they're the only two teams that could win the division. The Giants could, but we all know they're not going to. So it's commanders and the Eagles and the commanders are coming out on top. And need I remind you, Kayla, I probably don't, but the commanders beat the Eagles in Philly last Uh, year, did they not? So so annoying. They actually have a good head-to-head against the Eagles. Don't remind me of that, man. Jaden Daniels is going to be rookie of the year by far, the way he's playing. So far. Uh, they so rushed far. for over 200 yards today against the Cardinals. They have a great defense, great leadership. Cliff Kingsbury, the OC, is rolling right now, having a lot of fun with Jaden Daniels. Mm-hmm. Uh, as an NFC East podcast with the Eagles, Cowboys, and Giants, who wants to start and talk about this commander's team? Tell me, tell me first uh, the headline. And then if if you think they're going to fall off or if they could actually win the division, that would be insane, right? As a rookie quarterback? 
It it would be insane. I'm I'm just gonna say that the headline will be rookie of the year with a question mark at the end. Like, is it like you mentioned, Jared? Like, he's gonna be rookie of the year. Like, is it too early to say that he's basically got this locked up? I don't know. I mean, based on the tra- tra- trajectory that he's on, he sure looks like he's going to win Rookie of the Year. He's already set an NFL record with 82% completion percentage in your first four NFL starts. That's better than Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Kyler Murray from 2021, I think, had a really good one. Like, literally, Jaden Daniels has taken this league by storm. And like you said, they've they've scored so many points. In Week 1, 20. Then in Week 2, 21. Then 38. Then 42. What, are they going to score more than 42 next week? Like, what the heck's going on here? He had 233 passing yards. He ran for another 47 yards and a touchdown. And this team had four rushing touchdowns today. Whenever they drop back, it seems like the defense doesn't really know what to do. He's literally just dropping back, and, and the pass rushes are just, like, exhausted at this point. So Daniels is taking the league by storm, and I think, I, I think that the Commanders will do well, but I do think it's too early to say that they're going to win the division or even... I, I still don't think that I'm ready to crown him. I think that it's going to start to slow down. People are going to start to like respect him and play him a little Their bit better. Their next two games, Browns and Ravens, two very tough defenses. Right. If, he can, if he can dice them up, if he could, oh, if, my, if, oh yeah, my. that'll that'll be Browns talent. If he could dice up Ravens Browns sure. and Ravens. Yeah. That'll be that'll be. Yeah, it. Browns aren't as good as we thought. <laughs> they just yeah, lost yeah, to Minshew still. today. And Gardner's yes. good, but that's I true. think that's we gotta true. we gotta but change if he the narrative. Them up properly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if he's throwing darts across the field, uh, that would be. Impressive. I'm trying to change the narrative uh, on the Browns. I think I think we're trying to get everyone to realize <laughs> what's going on. You're succeeding, uh, Jonathan. Are you, as a Cowboys fan, are you concerned about the Commanders at all? Am I concerned about the Commanders? Um, well, let me start with the headline. The headline could be rookie quarterback puts the NFL on notice or puts the NFC East on notice rather. Mm. Rookie quarterback puts the NFC East on notice. Okay, and that's what's happened. There's somebody else we have to worry about besides just the Eagles and Cowboys every year. Now it's three. Eagles, Cowboys, Commanders. It's going to be a, it's going to be fun to watch these guys over the next few years. Um, but these three teams now legitimately have quarterbacks that will compete against each other and give us exciting games. Um, hopefully the Giants get somebody that can do that as well. But uh, am I concerned about the Commanders? A little bit, yeah. Um, like John read you those stats, he has had impressive numbers. Even today, 26 of 30, um, one touchdown, one interception, 233 yards. I, I don't know what his pass rating was, but I have to imagine it was pretty darn good. Uh, that's impressive. That coupled with 47 rush yards, eight rushes, this guy can do it all. He opens up the offense for Cliff Kingsbury to be creative, and that's what you love as an offensive coordinator. And he's able to execute. He makes a few mistakes. He's a rookie, so he's gonna make some inter- he's gonna make some mistakes, throw a couple interceptions here and there. But this guy is a real deal. Um, a lot of people may have thought he was overrated because he came from LSU. LSU has a lot of great athletes, so you can make an argument that hey, he's just been part of a good team. But no, this guy. You realize why he won the Heisman last year. He's showing us why he was a Heisman winner last year. Um, and so I am con- I am a little bit concerned because players like this guy, you can't really just, like, you can't coach against that, really. It's just if they make a play, you just got to tip your hats and say, hey, that's just an athlete. That's sometimes that happens in high school football. Sometimes that happens. Really great athletes to coach. It's not, they don't even yell at you like, okay, I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. That's just talent. And that's, I'm afraid that's going to happen. You're going to have a few plays like that where Jaden Downs is going to have huge plays against the Cowboys and um, it's going to open up the scoring. And um, he's probably going to, they may, they may win in one of the two matchups against us. But uh, I am concerned at this point because they have a lot of momentum. They're three and, or three and one or four and one. Um, but they have a lot of momentum right now. Three and one. Okay. They have a lot of momentum right now. And Jaden Daniels is just giving, he's just building his confidence right now. 42 points against um, the Cardinals. That's a, that's a big deal. I'm, I'm a little concerned, given the way Cowboys have played, given how they just sneaked past the Giants. Don't get me started. I, I, uh, they're so stressful. <laughs> Anyways. At least you guys won. Yeah, the, yeah, I mean, at least we won. But yeah, looking at all the NFC East teams right now, I mean, the Commanders look the best, let's be honest. The Commanders look the best. They look better than the Cowboys. look better than the Eagles. Definitely better than the Giants, obviously. But... <laughs> Yeah, the Commanders are that team right now. 
because of Jaden Daniels. John's getting freaking strays yes. everywhere. Side swipes. Giants are bottom say. barrel, guys. <laughs> I, mean, I actually like some of the stuff the I saw. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, you got neighbors at least. Yeah, I was like, there's some okay. things I actually yeah, like watching the, the Giants. We have the number one receiver in fantasy football this season. And I could see why Jones, I was able to see in the Cowboys-Giants game why Jones, I, I mean, I don't see it. I don't agree with it. But like, it's like, oh, I see why someone would pay him this much. It's not enough, though. It's not enough for them <laughs> no, to win games. Enough. But I was like, yeah, this is why they were deluded into <laughs> yep. locking him in for you so know, long. You, you know who you need, John? Arch Manning. Shadur. No, I need Arch Manning. I'm yeah, Arch Manning. Dude, dude. Hey, if y'all can wait another for year. Arch. Do you think y'all can wait another year of that? This like Yes, I'm fine with waiting. <laughs> if you can guarantee me that I'm getting Arch Manning, I'll wait. <laughs> Delayed gratification. That's smart. I'll uh, I'll go into my headline. Um, it, It's similar to y'all's, but uh, my headline would be uh, Commander in Chief, question mark. You know, uh, a few things come to mind. One, and this is big picture, and I, I like to say one, and I don't. This is a podcast. We record this because we would debate these things. And um, I think it's on the record. I really liked Brian Robinson Jr. I have him on fantasy, at least one of my teams. You didn't start him. No faith. Lie. <laughs> <laughs> I started oh. the wrong B. Robinson. No, no, no. It was, <laughs> I have James Cook as well. You know, we're PPR. I had to get a flex receiver. Uh, that being okay. said, don't believe him that much. Robinson Jr. twenty one carries, one hundred one yards. He averaged five yards a carry after running it twenty one times. Like, you know, maybe there's a big run here and there, but that's you know one part. That's one thing. Two is Jaden Daniels. You know, said LSU Burroughs come there. They produce some like great minds at quarterback that can execute. That's a great percentage. The other part is you mentioned putting uh, John when you were talking about the. It's great company to be in the names about how well they start. But um, Kyler Murray was among them, and he's also legit. I think he's good. But part of the nuance of that, I think, that we have to watch and why I'd put a question mark is they might have their franchise guy, but I agree with your take that you also said, uh, John, and I think Jonathan, of it's still too early to tell because y'all remember Cliff Kingsbury on the, on the Cardinals? Like the first eight weeks of the season, he'd kill it. And then towards the end, it's like either they get figured out or he just doesn't scheme as well as the season goes on. They get, I don't want to say get exposed, but that high, they just did, that was a, tr- remember you guys, you guys remember that? Like it was just a trend. Yeah. Yes. So I remember that. But yeah. I, I mean, Kyler Murray and the Kyler, Cardinals. They, but Kyler did have like an ankle injury, I believe. Right. That he was, no, but it, it was, was like, like a few seasons. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was multiple of the same. Really? And that's, yeah. Like right after like week 10 or something. <laughs> it's like a stat. They yeah. Were like almost near undefeated. And then after week 10, <laughs> just pull them stats. In, absolute plumbing. Yeah. We got, I'll, I'll, I'll try to look at those yeah, stats. That's one thing. Yeah. That's one thing I fear of Jaden Daniels. I hope he can find a way to maybe get stronger or find ways to be smart in rushing the ball because we saw what happened to RG3 and all that. Yeah. Hopefully he's able to keep himself healthy and be smart and know when to rush like Mahomes. And Josh Allen's just big. He's It's tough to get him hurt. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. so like you can't really play his style. But being creative and finding ways to rush in a smart way to you know have a longer career I think is important for him. So I hope he can do that. And that's one thing I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about. Now yeah, that was Rangers. a big thing. That was a big thing of what, like why people were hesitant to draft him is because if you watch some of his highlights, like he runs it a up. lot in yeah. college, and he would get knocked blown up, up <laughs> absolutely trucked. Yeah. Some of the hardest hits you'll ever Jeez. see have been against Jaden Daniels. So oh, I didn't know that for him, he's so small. I'm well, not small, but he's skinny and lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. That oh, an NFL linebacker he'll come and hit him and, he, and he's going to be out for the season kind of like anthony richardson running quarterback yeah. gets injured right away in his rookie year so that was the concern but now i feel like he's being smart about running the ball but he's also sitting in the pocket and he has time 90 percent, not 90 percent, but a lot of his throws that we're all looking at are these like 40 and 50 yard bombs that he's dropping right in the bread basket for terry mclaurin and all these guys and you're like Wait a minute. He's he, he. You know what? He did in college have the highest uh, deep ball completion percentage. Jeez. So he he was a good deep ball thrower. But I think what happened was the LSU line wasn't as good. So he would run out of the pocket and run for first. Now I feel like he's doing it a lot more efficiently and doing it as like a last resort rather than the first option. Um, but for Jaden Daniels, wow, wow, wow. I mean, we all looked at Caleb Williams. 
as a guy that was going to get picked up right away and be a rookie of the year with mm-hmm. all the weapons that he has. And then you look at the commanders, they have weapons, but they're not fantastic. Uh, well, Terry finally yeah, has I a would... receiver. Uh, scary Terry, Terry McLaurin. Scary People Terry. have been saying he yeah. has the talent to do it, but there was a thing. I forget what the, specifically what the stat was, but he's had like, uh, I want to say like nine different quarterbacks throw to him in the past like five years. You know, like yeah. this poor man. I think he, he has a gr- exceptional talent, but I don't think people know about him the way that we, people who know talent should because of like, you don't have the, like, like all you're saying. And I like, I like your, I mean, Jonathan, you bring up a good point. He's fallen, right? Jared, your college experience is like invaluable. Cause I didn't know about these nuances about his game. You know, did he get injured a lot at L- LSU or was he just kind of able to take the hit? He, he, he transferred. So he's at Arizona state, okay. then went to LSU. Uh, I'm not sure about how injury prone he was, but he would get hit a lot. But I mean, his highlights, it, you can see he gets, he gets blasted, but yeah, I feel like now I, I haven't, I haven't really seen any big hits since the giants game. He got, he, he ran and got like a hip um, injury, yeah, yeah. came out for one play, came back in. So since then I haven't seen him like take any big hits, which they probably, you know, told him don't, <laughs> don't take any big well, hits as a rookie. I think that's part of excellence is knowing your limitations, you know? And I think that's one thing I was trying to, I, I don't think I articulated it well, but watching some of Kayla Williams' games this, this season with the bears, like, no, I don't think he's outperformed, you know, a guy like Daniels or some other quarterbacks in the league. But I do a, like for how much talent people say he should have. He's doing good. Caleb Williams is at falling at the right times, like not taking the hits. And that's something you'd want to see in a guy like Daniels, you know. And da- it sounds like Daniels reminds me if you guys watch the Eagles like um, Smitty on the Eagles, you know, <laughs> like uh, Smith, Devonta Smith. He looks oh, like yeah. a skinny guy. Yeah. I'm not saying he's not strong, but it's like. Every time he gets tackled on, but he's like, there's uh, maybe it's genetics or off the field stuff that uh, we don't know about, but it looks like they 100%. should get hurt, but they don't. I mean, not that he's, you 100%. know, it's just like some guys are just durable and that's part of, you know, the NFL is not, it's, it's not a fair game where, you know, it's not always just talent, but just how well you get injured or not. Injured. Well, that's why I'm, int- I'm intrigued to see him with the Browns and with uh, against the Browns and against the yeah. Ravens. The Ravens Both. is a huge test. Yeah. If he can yeah, do well against that, then, hey, this guy's. Here to stay for a while. Right. Uh, let's move on to the Jets. Okay. This is a, a big disappointment, basically. Uh, everybody in, in MetLife was shocked. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Broncos came into MetLife and upset the New York Jets 10-9. to 10-9 to nine was full game score. Might be scoregami. I should check. <laughs> um, my headline... No TDs for the MVP or former MVP. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, they scored yeah. zero touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers could not score a touchdown in the whole game. Granted, yeah, the Broncos, they did beat the Bucks. They're not terrible. The, the defense is probably top five. But my expectations for this season for the Jets were Super Bowl. Expectations were playoffs. Expectations were conference championship, division championship. What are, what are we doing? We're, we're, you're playing with your food. The Broncos? <laughs> if that's your struggle to get through the Broncos at home in a, a rainy type of day that, that you should be familiar with, Aaron Rodgers, playing in Green Bay, just the worst weather you could possibly imagine. Uh, Brees Hall, non-existent non-existent they they start running the ball with braylon allen who's a rookie great guy and potentially a good player not at the level of Brees hall why are we not running Brees hall into the ground <laughs> that's my first thing the Don't second like thing <laughs> this offensive line is in question because aaron Rodgers is immobile immobile he can't run and every time he gets tackled everyone gasps <gasps> And they, because he they re, he reaches for his leg, and and everyone's like, oh my god, it happened. Like it's almost like a ticking time bomb. Mm. Like what they said about Juju Smith Schuster's knee. <laughs> it's, it's only a matter of time before it explodes. <laughs> I got, you know, that's another story. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, Morgan Moses, they got him from the Ravens. He got injured. He wasn't playing. That's fine. 
But still, this line is not clicking at all. And you have Brees Hall and you have Aaron Rodgers. You need a great line to succeed. These receivers are not good enough. Mike Williams, Lazard, they're not good enough to get separation. Garrett Wilson is okay, but he is not a superstar. I am shocked at uh, uh, why. Uh, uh, yes. John and Jonathan Did you say that with a straight the face? Way, well, the way that he is acting, he is no superstar to me. <laughs> No Ooh. superstar. Why That's are we not huge. throwing him the ball 10-plus times? Be careful what you say. <laughs> yeah. Why are careful. we not throwing to him 10-plus times? If he's such a superstar, is, is Aaron Rodgers really going to choose Alan Lazard over Garrett Wilson? Why is he doing that? The chemistry, Lazard is, is maybe has better chemistry with, with Aaron Rodgers from the past years. Yes. Yeah. But if if Garrett Wilson's a superstar, like we talk about Justin Jefferson neighbors. and we talk about all these guys, na- neighbors, why are we not throwing like Daniel Jones is to that's neighbors? On, that's on co- it's on ro- coaching though, because the coaches didn't move him around and get him away from Sertan at all. And Sert- yeah. Sertan is so. good. I think you find a way if you're a receiver. Well, you what find are you going to get? Know, open. You got to find a way to get you open. You got to do what they tell you. You're going to yell at. Yeah, they're gonna get open. Why did you run that route? You know, they're gonna get it. If you're <laughs> open, you're open. If if I tell you to run a route, get open. how are you, you gonna get? Be, op- how are you gonna get open on Sertan though? It's not. It's like you. You gotta be a superstar, <laughs> and you just prove my point. There ain't no superstar. <laughs> not- so currently, right now, I don't want to talk too long, but no, currently, right now, out. this offense has no superstar because Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall, who were supposedly the stars of this team, are non-existent. And now you're looking at Lazard and Mike Williams who are leading the team. Uh, This is bad. This is really, really, really bad. Uh, I'm super concerned as a, as a person who picked the jets to win the division. I am way, way, way concerned because not only is the offense bad, the defense, they did well today against the Broncos. (laughs) uh, But it was not good. They'll have a test next week against the Vikings. It was not so, good. oh goodness that's, gracious. That's gonna be tough. Okay. I'm leaving, I'm, but, I just don't uh, I just don't see this team flipping it around anytime soon. I know Aaron Rodgers, not a great first half kind of guy. <sighs> um so I'm gonna bank on that. I'm gonna bank on him not being a first yeah. half guy. And we you know Rogers, we didn't get him in the first half, but in the second half they'll they'll get him. And maybe, maybe Rodgers can, but I don't even like the way Rogers' demeanor is on the field. Oh, it's disgusting. I hate it, John. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say similar similar thing to you, but my headline is no jet fuel. And to <laughs> me, like you said, that last point you made I like because to me, watching this Jets team, there's no fuel. There's no fire behind them. They're not there there's no like, all right, let's let's w- go get this game and win this game. There, there just seems like there's no energy. Like Brees Hall, ten carries for four yards. That's 0.4 yards per carry. His longest rush of the day against the Broncos was three yards? Like, what's going on? Like, yeah, Jared, you're right. Like, either Garrett Wilson has to, like, figure something out, the coach has got to figure something out, or the offensive line and Brees Hall have got to be like, we're, we're, we're taking over this freaking game. Like, let's go. Or the def- like, somebody do something. At least the defense, though, did perform well. But how do you lose? The Jets lost in a game where their opponent had 60 passing yards. Like oh. 60 passing yards oh. and you lose? Yeah. Like, I don't even understand how you do that. And I can't even fathom how they lost. But my the biggest concern is that they're so inconsistent. I really don't know what team's going to show up. Next week against the Vikings, it's in London. They got to travel to London, get used to the time zone. And the, the fact that this team has no jet fuel, I don't think the Jets going to make it there. They might have to turn around. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when they wake up if they're going to have any energy or if they're not. <laughs> That's the good. Vikings like return like to that. England. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's a good one too, Caleb. <laughs> um, so the headline: Bad weather proves to be a huge factor in Jets offense. Oh, it's, it's, it's as simple an as that. Excuse. It's, an <laughs> it's as simple as it's as simple as that, guys. That's it's an excuse. Simple as that. Rating for both sides. I, I it, it is rating for both sides, but some no, it only rained on one half of the field. <laughs> Hey, like, there's been moments where, for example, Belichick and some of these other coaches, they practice with wet balls because they know it's going to be bad weather. Maybe they didn't do that. Some teams are more prepared than others. And in this case, the Jets weren't right, so prepared for this. Right, so an excuse for them. It, 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 that can play a role. That can play a role in the offense. 
Um, it can make things messy if you're not ready for it. And that's what, that's what happened. I think this is recency bias. It was one game. It was bad weather. Um, so you got to cut him some slack. Okay. Um, it can be a little slippery out there. Rogers is pretty old, right? He's about to be 40 or he's 40. He's pretty old. So it can be hard for him to maneuver and move around. It can be hard for receivers to get open. Even if, even, and even if there are open and if the ball's wet, it's tough to catch the ball. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of factors with the bad weather. And that's just what it was. It's just one game. They played well against the Patriots the other week. And Patriots have a pretty good squad, pretty good defense. They they dominated them. So I still have hope that Here's that my team concern, can be more. Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> Playoffs. Say they win the division and they get a home playoff game. You know what New York is like in, in January. It's worse. It's worse than what we just saw out there. Yeah. So are we are we get we're let's let's bookmark this and we'll keep it. <laughs> weather weather can't be. I don't really want be anyone an issue. picking the Jets. But <laughs> Rogers, there's the no worse weather, weather than Wisconsin. Yeah, that's I know. So, that's so, what I'm so, so you. I mean, that's, I mean, that's no. I mean, that's snow. Right now we're talking He's about rainy, been nude disgusting. In the snow. Like, Him and Devontae Adams in the snow is like a cheat code. <laughs> Why yes, no, yes, no. Wilson, it's, his it's, Devontae Adams. I mean, not Come to get on. all sciencey and everything, but snow, I think snow is a different texture than rain. Rain is just like wet and it's annoying. It's easily slippery. Snow, oh, not as slippery okay. in my opinion, right? I, I mean, I'd agree. Yeah. I, I think I mean, it's a little that's... different. I think it's a little different. So I, I think that the weather played a role in their offense. That's why, <laughs> that's like, I've seen it before. I've seen it before <laughs> with many teams where rainy weather can cause their offense to not look like they're great. But believe me, uh, there was a lot of great moments in today's game against, the, you know, the, the Broncos. Don't get me wrong. The Broncos aren't trash, Jared. Okay, they're not trash. Their nice, defense yeah. is pretty good. I know, but you're acting like, oh, against the, the Broncos? What are we doing here? The Chiefs, I guarantee the Chiefs would have you're struggled. You're telling the same me way. that a Broncos team with a rookie quarterback and and freaking Timbuktu at receiver is better than the Jets <laughs> and should compete and should beat the Jets? And not only that, but not score a touchdown against the... What happens when they go and face the Bills? What happens when they go and face the Ravens? They're going to be screwed. It was a rematch, too, yeah. with uh, Hackett. Look what they did... Yeah, and look what they did with the 49ers. First game of the season. Get absolutely slapped. That was the first... Like, that's, it, that, that's the thing. Was, I mean, not to use excuses. That was the first game I of the season. Of? <laughs> what can I go it's off It's too of? early to tell. It's Unfortunately, I hate to say that, but it's too early to tell. I mean, and number one. Number two, we're talking about the weather here. I'm talking about rainy weather bad weather okay i mean anything could happen and that the other team could get lucky that's what happened they went only they only won 10 to 9 the broncos only went 10 to 9 it's not like it got demolished anybody could have won that game it's just like unfortunate it sucks like they want to you know, they kick the field goal after it was like 7 to 9 they kick the field goals 10 9 i mean it's just unluck but they should I mean, have a better run game though on the jets right that's what's concerning yeah they didn't Brees have a good Hall, run game what was i don't he even think he was the number top two fantasy he wasn't even talking about on Brees Hall. running back he, i think braylon allen had more eight carries 34 allen, yeah. yep yeah, yeah i mean you perform better than Brees, but it's it's concerning because Brees, what was he number two overall fantasy yeah, guy number number two running back in fantasy consensus yeah. caleb you're an, you're an aaron Rodgers fan tell it to me straight tell it to me straight please yeah i i actually agree with a lot of the vibe of what you're saying jared like last year it, it's against Sertan. it's understandable even the best you know if it's a good day for a cornerback but he is the best probably the he's, best he's awesome i you know but like like you're alluding to like, like you see with the chiefs today travis kelsey fantasy points is not real life you know but they basically did whatever they could at this point to get their top guy involved and active because what it was doing for the whole offense and the team wasn't good. Today, he had 15 points fantasy. You know, it's alluding to how involved he was compared to his previous high was like seven for Travis Kelsey. Now you see the team doing that. This game and the pattern of the games, not saying he hasn't had big days, but like you need to get your star players to make star plays. And Aaron Rodgers is older. Part of the this debate last season was that they were a quarterback away, that Brees Hall was a superstar running back. They had a superstar. They have a superstar in Garrett Wilson. I do. He's a little bit like uh, Terry McLaurin. We just talked about like in his first in earlier in his career, though, like they were all saying last year, like, oh, he would be so much better if they had a good quarterback. And, and if, I don't know if you guys saw Bill Belichick talking about uh, Darnold, but he was like, you know, Everyone in the league who knew football really liked Donald except the Jets. <laughs> and now Donald's going, wow. not saying we, 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 I don't think we were fans except Jonathan, but like interesting to see, like maybe it's part of the coaching culture of uh, the Jets. I think my headline was the Jets are grounded. 
You know, like they part of that is in the past few games, like their highest score in the past four weeks, um, it was 24 points, I think, overall. And that's not enough for how much talent they should have. I know they have Rodgers. I know they depend on the defense, but for who they're going to face down the road and the way they're getting those 24 points, if at all, first of all, <laughs> first, let me get to this. They, they got blown out by the San Francisco. They should have beaten the Broncos, who Nathaniel Hackett was the former uh, head coach. Ooh, is a good rematch. Line. Yeah. Ooh. Good To go 10 line. to 9. Because part of it was like past few weeks they're winning. People were like, oh, now that Hackett has rosters, he's calling. He's a great coach at calling plays now. And it's like, oh, that's, in, you know, question mark there. Um, so this was a rematch. But then also they put up 24 points against not so great teams. And and then when it was a 40, when it was the 49ers, they got blown out. So it's like, I know it's Rogers' first f- real first year with the team playing real games, but again, he is forty, he is older, and what Tom Brady did was exceptional. We've seen the careers turn out in different directions. I think it's always psychologically hard for me to bet against Rogers because he is that good, but when he when he wants to be, but it's still, you still got fifty players on the roster, still eleven, ten other guys, you know, on the field, and you need those guys to show up, and if they are alleged to have the talent, they should be getting more than 24 points. You know, even if you are a defense focused team, they got it there. And I don't, I don't, I think the jets are, are grounded. Like, I, I don't think they can get up. Are they're not a team that can put up over 30 easily? Like it's on a very good day. If all cylinders are going versus a team like the chiefs where they're winning by under 20, but you know, at any moment, one of their players can go off and have a huge field day. And do you guys feel that with the jets? Like, I don't, I don't think so. That that's a, that's a good point to make. I think the phrase "we're a quarterback away" is one of the most dangerous, misleading statements any fan could ever say. Because the last time I heard that was the Denver Broncos, and they got Russell Wilson, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, they were a quarterback away! They got Russell Wilson! Oh my God, this is it! They're gonna explode!" And then nothing happened. And now we hear the Jets. Complain about quarterback. We're a quarterback away. Last season, we're a quarterback away. Oop, starting off the season on a dud. You're it's overreacting. Like, that's You're overreacting, a dangerous Jared. thing to say. <laughs> You're overreacting. That's a dangerous. You're overreacting. Jared. It's not like they get. Them, it's not like they get them blown out every game. Like it's they've been close. It happened to be bad weather today. Cut them some yeah, slack, but they're man. Clo- they're close against bad against teams. the Titans. They won they by lost. a touchdown. Yeah, they won by a touchdown against the Titans. They got blown out by the 49ers. They lose at home to the Broncos. I don't care what the score is. You lost to the Broncos. Even 10-9 has got to be a boring game. Like, I feel bad for anyone. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> John's it's a boring Cousins game. Yeah, my cousins <laughs> went to the game. I didn't know that. Uh, or, uh, but ask them if they thought it was exciting. It's fun to go to these games. We've been to MetLife. We, you know, it's it's a great vibe. But tell me. Oh, we've been we've been to a stink. Yeah. We've been to- <laughs> right. Like. Come on. We saw Mike Glennon. Yeah, at we quarterback. watched Mike Glennon, guys. <sighs> Mike Glennon. No, was I was happy game. to see him because in Madden years ago, he was my franchise guy. I turned him in a Super Bowl victory. Victor, <laughs> Mike Glennon. So yeah, I could only have But I was in Madden. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Against the pretend and yeah, well, Broncos. I mean, come on. Any any last words before we wrap this up on the Jets? I just think I, I I, like anything you guys want to say to just cement it as uh, we're doing this September 29th, you want to be like, yeah, we're overreacting. Do you want to be like, yeah, they're going to turn this around. Jonathan, John, any, anybody want to take a stab at a little prediction? Yeah, you guys, I want this on record. J- John, Jared, Caleb, you guys are all overreacting. But Jonathan's saying, no, Jets aren't done yet. This is just the beginning. Jonathan's saying it. And he's going to be right at the end of the season. Wow. Playoffs, division winner, anything you want to... How's their division? They'll make the playoffs. Jets will make the playoffs. They could maybe get a wild card, but, dude, their next few weeks are tough. Yeah, I think think they could still make the playoffs. I just don't... Still, playoffs are still open, but division... Division... They uh, have to build the Jets. Yeah, it looks looks like the Bills are are more dominant. They got the Vikings, Bills, Steelers, Patriots, they already beat by 21, Texans... Cardinals. It's not a lot of quote unquote easy games. It's, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna yeah. be tough. I, I need to see more. And I, I picked them to win division, so I, I want them to succeed. I just am the biggest critic right now because I was so disappointed. Uh um, but yeah, that'll do it for uh this week's 
episode of the Drone Bait Podcast. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 5,000. If you haven't already, go hit that follow button over on TikTok and on Instagram at Dorm Debate Podcast. I think we hit 5,000 on Instagram. So, round of applause for everyone on that. Uh, we hit 5,000 on Instagram. We're, we're well over, uh, I think, 224. 225,000. Uh, yeah. 5,000 on TikTok. Past our previous so, peaks, guys. Thank you. Thanks to the audience, exactly. fans, for tuning in. Keep it up. Let your friends know. Record, Thank yeah. you so guys. much. Yeah. Record high. It's exciting. Record. It's amazing. Uh, thank you so much for all the support throughout the season. Uh, we got plenty more for you, so please stay tuned. And as always, we will see you guys next week.